Today, we join a bored gamer as he embarks on a journey through the Serengeti. Derived from the sign language meaning endless plains, this region of Africa is located in North Tanzania and extends to southwestern Kenya, stretching 30,000 square kilometers. Let's discover the magic of these plains as we create our own nature documentary in an enchanting new board game. What kind of adventure will you create in Wild Serengeti? Wild Serengeti is a 1-4 to four player game for ages 14 and up with an average gameplay length of 45 to 120 minutes published by Bad Comet. The basic overview for Wild Serengeti has you spending coins to discover and place animals on the map to create scenes that match your scene cards for points. At the end of six rounds, the player with the most points wins. To set up the game, select a map to play on. Lay it in the middle of the table, then near the map board, place the action board. Depending upon the number of players, place lock tokens over any spaces labeled for three to four players, if you do not have that many players. Next, place three animals of each type on the action board. In the carnivorous predators area, place crocodiles, leopards, and lions. In the large mammal area, place rhinos, elephants, and giraffes. The scavengers area will have jackals, hyenas, and vultures, and finally, the migratory herbivore area will have zebras, wildebeest, and gazelle. Shuffle all scene cards and draw six to create a card pool near the board. Additionally, give each player eight scene cards. They will choose four to keep and discard the rest. Set up the Rock of Ages and place the Hornbill round marker on the one, and then place two random award tiles face up, one underneath round four, and the other underneath round six. Place the shuffle migratory deck near the Rock of Ages. Within reach of all players, place score, VFX, food, and coin tokens. Next, give each player two player markers, a video gallery bar, and six coins. Place one of the two markers on the zero on the score tracker. Finally, give the first player marker to the player who has most recently watched a wildlife documentary and you are ready to begin. Remember the goal of the game is to accumulate points by completing scene cards. With that being said, let's look at a few different types of scene cards. The basic layout has icons at the top, animal pattern, scene type, and reward. Also at the very bottom are animal facts. There are three types of scenes you can complete. You have terrain scenes. These scenes only require that type of animal to be on that type of terrain anywhere on the board. There are four types of terrain. You have the grasslands, identified by the grass icon, water, identified by the water droplet, woodlands by the tree, and rock by the boulder icon. The second type of scene is the straight line scene. To complete, the animals must be in a straight line in order, vertically or horizontally, never diagonally. The direction does not matter, nor do any other animals in between the ones in the scene card. The third type of scene is the adjacent scene. The lower animals must be within the eight spaces around the central animal. Be aware that some scene cards, no matter the type, have terrain requirements. Some of the rewards you can receive can be points indicated by the star, food tokens that can be used to move animals, and VFX tokens that allow you to ignore a terrain requirement. Another thing to keep an eye out for are the icons. Once completed, cards can still give you rewards. The food and VFX icons allow you to collect a token for each icon during round preparation. The leaf, flower, and fruit icons help you gain more points whenever completing a scene with something like this in the reward section. You will choose one of the icons, solve the equation to score that many points. 
The same goes for the rare cards indicated by the diamond. The animal icons that look like paw prints come into play around the award ceremonies in round 4 and 6. When counting the number of animals for the award, count each animal icon as well and add them to your final total. And finally we have the heart-like icon. These award points at the end of the game for a total number collected. If you ever have more than 10, you can start another set for more points. For example, if you end up with 14 likes, you can score 60 points. But 12 likes will only score you 50 since you need at least 3 likes to score any points. Now that you know how to score, let's play a few rounds. Starting with the first player, you can perform one basic action and any number of free actions on your turn. Your basic actions consist of placing your marker on a location, paying the cost, and completing the action. All the locations are on the action board. You can discover a type of animal by placing your marker on a discover location. You can also collect a scene card and any additional scene cards for an extra coin per card. Or wipe the scene pool, draw six new cards, take one card for free, and any additional card for an extra coin per card. You can also have the option to swap two animals or move a single animal one to three spaces. However, these two actions are not allowed in the first round. Let's fast forward through a couple turns. By placing the action marker here on discover a large mammal, the player will pay a single coin to discover a giraffe. They will then immediately place it on the map anywhere they would like. The next player would also like to discover a large mammal, but they will have to pay two coins since the first spot is a closed spot indicating only one player can occupy it. The two coin location is open indicating multiple players can go there. They take an elephant and place it on the board. And with their free action, they complete their scene and place it under their video gallery. They collect any rewards and pass to the next player. Let's pause here for a moment and talk about the free actions you can take on your turn. You just saw the complete a scene bonus action. You can also discard two incomplete scene cards you have to gain a coin. You may also spend any number of food to move an animal in equal number of spaces. Also, spending VFX tokens lets you ignore a requirement on a scene card. If you run out of coins and can no longer take an action, or have less than three coins and do not wish to take any more actions, you can pass for the round. Once you do this, Collect your marker and wait for the other players to pass for the round. Once all players have passed, we move on to round preparation. Start by moving the hornbill to the next round. Check for any events. In the first three rounds, there are no events. When moving to the fourth round, you will hold the first award ceremony. Total the number of animals that match the award tile and animal icons, and the player with the highest total gains double the amount of points as their total. And the player with the second highest total will gain points equal to their total. If any ties, all tied players receive the full points. Also, starting with the fourth round, you will draw a Great Migration card. In a one to three player game, you will remove all animals on the brown spaces and return them to the discover area of the action board. In a four player game, remove the animals from the brown and blue spaces. In the fifth round, you will draw another Great Migration card. And in the final sixth round, you will hold the second award ceremony and draw a Great Migration card. Next, no matter the round, you will discard all six scene cards from the pool and draw six new scene cards. Each player will draw four scene cards and choose one to keep and discard the rest. But if you wish to keep an extra card, you must pay a coin for each additional card. But be aware there is an 8 uncompleted scene card hand limit. And then finally, collect round rewards. In rounds 1 through 3, collect 6 coins for each round, and 7 coins for rounds 4 through 6. Also, collect any resource tokens awarded from completed scene card icons, and pass the player marker to the player to the left, and start the new round. After six rounds, the game ends. Add any bonus points from the like icons 
and the player with the most points wins. If tied, the player with the most completed scene cards wins. If, after a few rounds of standard play, you wish to add some spice to your game, you can add the specialist cards. The game setup and gameplay is the same, except during setup, you will deal three specialist cards to each player, choose one, and discard the rest. The filled in dots show the difficulty associated with the specialist. Some give additional points during the game, where others provide points at the end of the game but they all provide a bit of variety to your individual strategy. If playing with the Animal Specialist expansion, during setup, place your specialist animal onto the board on any space. And as a free action on your turn, you can move your animal up to three spaces. All animal specialists can share a space with other animals except for the hippo and the baboon, and they are not affected by the great migration cards. And that is how you play wild Serengeti. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notified about new videos. If you're bored now, click this for more games.